Cognitive development is a way of addressing the way a child learns to think, reason, and use language, which are vital to the child's overall growth and development. The vital organ to cognitive development is the brain. In this lesson 2 of module 2, we will be discussing the brain and Jean Piaget's cognitive development. The following are the learning competencies set for this lesson. 1. Discuss that understanding the different parts of the brain, processes, and functions may help in improving thoughts, behavior, and feelings. 2. Explore ways how to improve brain functions for personal development. 3. Develop a personal plan to enhance brain functions. Take note of these learning competencies since these are to attain to determine if you have learned about the topic. For us to have a glimpse of the important concepts that we need to learn, here are questions that will also help us in analyzing the lesson. 1. What are the parts of the brain and their functions? 2. What are the parts of neurons and their functions? 3. How does human cognition process information based on Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development? 4. How does human cognition develop according to Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development? These questions will be presented in each topic to serve as a guide. Look for the answer to these questions. This lesson tackles the brain and Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development. As such, we will be focusing first our discussion on the topic the brain, its parts and their functions. The brain is the most complex organ in the human body. This three-pound organ serves as the seat of intelligence, the interpreter of senses, the initiator of body movement, and the controller of behavior. The brain, lying in its bony shell and washed by protective fluid, is the source of all the characteristics that define our humanity. The human brain is the crown jewel of the body. Let us now discuss the different parts of the brain and their functions. The cerebrum, cerebellum and brain stem are the three major sections of the brain. The cerebrum is the largest of the three brain sections, accounting for approximately 85% of the brain's weight. The cerebrum oversees initiating and coordinating movement, as well as regulating temperature. Other parts of the cerebrum are responsible for speech, judgment, thinking and reasoning, problem solving, emotions, and learning. Other functions are associated with vision hearing, touch, and other senses. There are four lobes in the cerebrum, frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. The frontal lobe is the brain's largest lobe, located in the front of the head. It is involved in personality traits, decision-making, and movement. Broca's area, which is associated with speech ability, is located in the frontal lobe. The parietal lobe, located in the middle of the brain aids in the identification of objects and the comprehension of spatial relationships. The parietal lobe is also involved in pain and touch perception in the body. Wernicke's area is located in the parietal lobe and aids the brain in understanding spoken language. The occipital lobe is located toward the back of the brain. It oversees vision. The temporal lobes are located on the brain sides. They help with short-term memory, speech, musical rhythm and some smell recognition. The cerebellum, also known as the little brain, is a fist-sized portion of the brain located at the back of the head, below the temporal and occipital lobes, and above the brain stem. It, like the cerebral cortex, is divided into two halves. The outer portion is made up of neurons, while the inner portion communicates with the cerebral cortex. Its function is to coordinate voluntary muscle movements and to keep posture, balance, and equilibrium. The brain stem is a neural tube that connects the spinal cord to the brain. It regulates vital functions such as breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and food digestion. Those activities take place without any conscious thought. The midbrain, pons, and medulla are all part of the brain stem. Equally important to being discussed is the neuron. Neurons, the basic functional units of the nervous system, are three-part structures that are essential for brain function. They are made up of a nerve cell body, an axon, and a dendrite, and they are responsible for the rapid-fire process that converts thought into movement. 
the thaw travels as an electrical signal from the nerve cell down the axon to a dendrite, which resembles nerve cell branches. The signal travels across space from the end of one cell's dendrite, known as a synapse, to the dendrite of another cell via chemicals known as neurotransmitters. This signal bounces from cell to cell until it reaches the muscle required to wave, wink, or walk. Having discussed the brain and the neuron, it is beneficial to learn about the development of human cognition. We will be grounding our discussion of cognitive development on Jean Piaget's theory. Jean Piaget conducted cognitive development research for 60 years. His research method involved observing a small number of individuals as they responded to cognitive tasks that he designed. These tasks were later referred to as Piagetian tasks. Piaget called his general theoretical framework genetic epistemology because he was interested in how knowledge developed in human organisms. Piaget was initially interested in biology, but he also had a background in philosophy, and knowledge from both disciplines influenced his theories and research of child development. Piaget investigated the implications of his theory not only for cognition but also for intelligence and moral development and his theory has been widely applied to teaching in curriculum. To begin let us look at the basic processes of how human cognition processes information. Jean Piaget introduced the following basic cognitive concepts which will be helpful in understanding the processing of information, schema, assimilation, accommodation, and equilibration. Schema the term schema was coined by Piaget to refer to the cognitive structures that individuals use to intellectually adapt to and organize their environment. It is a person's way of comprehending or inventing meaning about a thing or experience. It's as if his mind has landed on a filing cabinet, with each drawer containing folders containing files of things he's encountered. For example, when a child sees a dog for the first time, he forms his own schema about what a dog is. It has four legs as well as a tail. It makes a bark. It has fur. The child then files this description in his mind, and when he sees another similar dog, he pulls out the file his dog schema in his mind and looks at it, and says four legs, tail, barks, furry that's a dog. Assimilation. This is the process of fitting a new experience into an existing or previously created cognitive structure or schema. For example, if the child sees another dog, this time a smaller one, he makes sense of what he is seeing by adding this new information, a different looking dog, into his schema of a dog. Accommodation. This is the process of creating a new schema. If the same child now sees another animal that looks a little bit like a dog, but somehow different, he might try to fit it into his schema of a dog and say, look mommy, what a funny looking dog. Its spark is funny too. Then the mommy explains, that's not a funny looking dog. That's a goat. With mommy's further descriptions, the child will now create a new schema, that of goat. He now adds a new file in his filing cabinet. Equilibration. Piaget believed that people have the natural need to understand how the world works and to find order, structure, and predictability in their life. Equilibration is achieving a proper balance between assimilation and accommodation. When our experiences do not match our schemata or cognitive structures, we experience cognitive disequilibrium. This means there is a discrepancy between what is perceived and what is understood. We then exert effort through assimilation and accommodation to establish equilibrium once more. Cognitive development involves a continuous effort to adapt to the environment in terms of assimilation and accommodation. In this sense, Piaget's theory is similar in nature to other constructivist perspectives of learning like Brunner and Vygotsky. With the knowledge about the basic cognitive concepts, we are now ready to discuss Jean Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Piaget's four developmental phases occur during infancy, preschool, childhood, and adolescence. Each stage is distinguished by a broad cognitive framework that influences all aspects of the child's thinking. Each stage represents the child's knowledge of reality at the time, and all save the final are insufficient approximations of reality. 
The child's awareness of the environment at each stage determines his or her development from one stage to the next. This behavior eventually produces cognitive instability to the point that thinking structures must be reorganized. Stage 1. Sensory Motor Stage The first stage corresponds from birth to infancy. This is the stage when a child who is initially reflexive in grasping, sucking, and reaching becomes more organized in his movement and activity. The term sensory motor focuses on the prominence of the senses and muscle movement through which the infant corresponds to learn about himself and the world. The prominent nature of the stage is object permanence. Object permanence is the ability of the child to know that an object still exists even when out of sight. This ability is attained in the sensory motor stage. Stage 2. Preoperational stage. The preoperational stage covers from about 2 to 7 years old roughly corresponding to the preschool years. Intelligence at this stage is intuitive in nature. At this stage, the child can now make mental representations and is able to pretend. The child is now ever closer to the use of symbols. This stage is highlighted by the following, symbolic function. This is the ability to represent objects and events. A symbol is a third that represents something else. A drawing, a written word, or a spoken word comes to be understood as representing a real object like a real MRT train. Symbolic function gradually develops in the period between 2 to 7 years. Riel, a 2-year-old may pretend that she is drinking from a glass that is empty. Though she already pretends the presence of water, the glass remains to be glass. At around 4 years of age, Nico, May, after pretending to drink from an empty glass, turns the glass into a rocket ship or a telephone. By the age of 6 or 7, the child can pretend to play with objects that exist only in his mind. Enzo, who is 6, can do a whole Ninja Turtle routine without any cost to more props. Tria, who is 7 can pretend to host an elaborate princess ball only in her mind. Egocentrism. This is the tendency of the child to only see his point of view and to assume that everyone also has the same point of view. The child cannot take the perspective of others. You see this in a five-year-old boy who buys a toy truck for his mother's birthday. Or a three-year-old girl who cannot understand why her cousins call her daddy uncle and not daddy. Centration. This refers to the tendency of the child to only focus on one aspect of a thing or event and exclude other aspects. For example, when a child is presented with identical glasses with the same amount of water the child will say they have the same amount of water. However once water from one of the glasses is transferred to an obviously taller but narrower glass, the child might say that there is more water in the taller glass. The child only focused or only one aspect of the new glass, that it is a taller glass. The child was not able to perceive that the new glass was centered. Is also narrower. The child only centered on the height of the glass and excluded the width in determining the amount of water in the glass. Irreversibility. Pre-operational children still have the inability to their thinking. They can understand that 2 3 is 5 but cannot understand that 5, 3 is 2 animism. This is the tendency of like traits or characteristics children to attribute humans to inanimate objects. When at night, the child is asked, where the sun is, she will reply, Mr. Sun is asleep. Transductive reasoning. This refers to the pre-operational child's type of reasoning that is neither inductive nor deductive. The reasoning appears to be from particular to particular i.e. If A causes B, then B causes A for example since her mommy comes home every day around 6 o'clock in the evening, when asked why it is already night, the child will say, because my mom is already home. Stage 3. Concrete Operational Stage. This stage is characterized by the ability of the child to think logically but only in terms of concrete objects. This covers approximately between 8-11 years or the elementary school years. The concrete operational stage is marked by the following, decentering. This refers to the ability of the child to perceive the different features of objects and situations. 
No longer is the child focused or limited to one aspect or dimension. This allows the child to be more logical in objects and situations. Reversibility. During the stage of concrete operations, the child can now follow those certain operations in reverse. For example, they can already comprehend the commutative property of addition, and that subtraction is the reverse of addition. They can also understand that a ball of clay shaped into a dinosaur can again be rolled into a ball of clay. Conservation. This is the ability to know certain properties of objects like number, mass, volume or area do not change even if there is a change in appearance. Because of the development of the child's ability of decentering and reversibility, the concrete operational child can now judge rightly that the amount of water in a taller but narrower container is still the same as when the water was in the shorter but wider glass. The children progress to attain conservation abilities gradually being a pre-conserver, a transitional thinker, and then a conserver. Seriation. This refers to the ability to order or arrange things in a series based on one dimension such as weight, volume or size. Stage 4. Formal Operational Stage. In the final stage of formal operations covering ages between 12 and 5 years, thinking becomes more logical. They can now solve abstract problems and can hypothesize. This stage is characterized by the following, hypothetical reasoning. This is the ability to come up with different hypotheses about a problem and to gather and weigh data to make a final decision or judgment be done in the absence of concrete objects. The individuals can now deal with what-if questions. Analogical reasoning. This is the ability to perceive the relationship in one instance and then use that relationship to narrow down possible answers in another similar situation or problem. The individual in the formal operations stage can make an analogy. If the United Kingdom is to Europe, the Philippines is too. The individual will reason that since the UK is found in the continent of Europe then the Philippines is found in what continent? Then Asia is his answer. Through reflective thought and even in the absence of concrete objects, the individual can now understand relationships and do analogical reasoning. Deductive reasoning. This is the ability to think logically by applying a general rule to a particular instance or situation. For example, all countries near the North Pole have cold temperatures. Greenland is near the North Pole. Therefore, Greenland has a cold temperature. On Jean Piaget's theory, it can be deduced that children were not less intelligent than adults, they simply think differently. That intellect evolves and increases via a succession of phases. That older children not only think faster than younger children but there are qualitative and quantitative distinctions in the thinking of early children versus adult that cognitive development involves changes in cognitive processes and skills, with early cognitive development including action-based processes and in progressing to changes in mental operations.